Welcome to a webcast made by the Learning Enhancement Team based in the Dean of Students Office at the University of East Anglia. This webcast is part of the Steps into Numeracy series and concerns adding and subtracting. This guide gives some general tips for adding and subtracting numbers quickly and correctly. Introduction Adding and subtracting are two of the four basic operations in mathematics. Multiplication and division are the other two. There are many ways to add and subtract and this guide concentrates on the well-known column method which you may be familiar with and looks like this. Here is an example of column addition and here is an example of column subtraction. This guide will go over how to perform this method and give you extra tips to improve your adding and subtracting skills. Adding successfully Although adding is generally well understood, there are some useful tips to bear in mind if you sometimes find adding difficult. Addition is usually performed by arranging the numbers to be added in a column with digits with the same place value being arranged below each other. This means that all the units, tens, hundreds and so on from your numbers should be aligned vertically. If you do not take the time to do this, then your addition will often be incorrect. Misalignment of the numbers you are adding often occurs if they have different numbers of digits. You can address this in the following ways. If you are using lined paper, turn it from portrait to landscape so that you have columns instead of rows. You can use these columns to help you line your numbers up. If you are adding whole numbers, ensure that the units are all in the same column. This should help you to line up the other digits correctly. If you are adding decimal numbers, place all the decimal points in the same column and align the other digits accordingly. Write zeros to fill in any gaps to the right of the decimal point so that your numbers have the same amount of digits to the right of the decimal point. If you are adding a mixture of whole and decimal numbers, introduce a decimal point at the right end of the whole numbers and then ensure all the decimal points are in the same column. You can also write zeros to fill in any gaps to the right and left of the decimal point so that your numbers have the same amount of digits. You always add down the columns of numbers starting with the one on the far right and then move left. You should remember that, when adding down a column of numbers, if your sum is over 10, then you can carry the 10s over into the next column and include them in the sum of that column. Remember, you do not have to add numbers in the order they are written. If you are adding a long list of numbers, it is useful to look to digits that add to 10, as adding 10s is easier. Learning and looking for number bonds, such as 4 plus 6, 3 plus 7 and so on will help your speed when adding, especially when you have a long list of numbers to add. Example Add 34, 123, 7 and 5659. First, line the numbers up with two lines at the bottom where your answer will be written. Then, add down the columns working from right to left. You start by writing this. Here is the column of numbers that you need to add up. 34, 123, 7 and 5659 with a plus symbol. Then two lines at the bottom where your answer will be written. Your calculation will look like this. The rightmost column adds to 23. You can use the number bonds 3 add 7 and then add 9 and 4. So 3 is written in the answer with 2 carried to the sum of the next column. This column adds to 12. You can use the number bond 2 plus 3 plus 5 and then add the carry 2. So 2 is written in the answer with 1 carried to the next column. This column adds to 8 and so 8 is written in the answer. Finally the only number in the final column is 5 
and so 5 is written in the answer. This shows that the sum of 34, 123, 7 and 5659 is 5823. Example, add 34, 1.23, 0 0.7 and 5.659. As you are adding decimal numbers, you must put the decimal points of all the numbers in the same column. Note that 34 is a whole number, so you can introduce a decimal point at the right end to give 34 point. Start your calculation by writing this. You can see that the decimal points are all aligned and that a decimal point has been added after the 34. Now write zeros to fill any gaps after the decimal points. So adding zeros after the decimal points, the calculation looks like this. Next add down the columns starting with the rightmost. So your calculation looks like this, and the rightmost column adds to 9. So 9 is written in the answer. The next column to the left adds to 8, so 8 is written in the answer. The next column adds to 15, so 5 is entered in the answer, with 1 being carried into the next column. Now add your decimal point. The next column adds to 11. You can use the number bond 1 plus 4 plus 5 and then add to the carried 1. So 1 is entered in the answer and 1 is carried into the next column. The final column adds to 4. This shows that the sum of 34, 1.23, 0 0.7 and 5.659 is 41.589. Subtracting successfully. In a similar way to addition, methods to help you subtract are generally well understood. However, it is not practiced as often as addition and these methods can easily be forgotten. You are rarely asked to subtract a long list of numbers and usually you need to take one number from another. All the tips at the beginning of this guide can be used to help improve your subtraction. However, there are different situations you may come across when you are required to subtract numbers which will require you to take extra care. Example, what is 867 subtract 143? If you look carefully you can see that each of the digits in 867 is larger than the corresponding digits in 143. Hundreds 8 is bigger than 1, tens, 6 is bigger than 4, units, 7 is bigger than 3. Subtractions for which this is the case are easily achieved. Line the numbers up as you would for addition with the largest number at the top. Start by writing this. 867 is on the top because it is the largest number. Here is a space for your answer. Then, working from right to left, you subtract the lower digit from the upper digit and write the answer in between the two lines. The calculation looks like this. So, 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, and 8 minus 1 is 7. This shows that 867 minus 143 equals 724. Example, what is 497 minus 378? Often subtractions are not as straightforward as in the previous example and you have to be careful when you carry them out. Here, 497 is 4 hundreds plus 9 tens plus 7 units. 378 is 3 hundreds plus 7 tens plus 8 units. Here there are fewer units in 497 than in 378 
and so you need to be careful. You cannot just subtract 8 from 7 and get minus 1 or even 1. The way you perform the subtraction is by borrowing from the next column to the left. You start your calculation by writing this. Note that the largest number is on the top. However, in 497 we have 7 units and in 378 we have 8 units, which is a problem. You can think of 497 as 497, 400 plus 8 tens plus 17 units, where you have borrowed one of the 9 tens and interpreted it as 10 units. You can now subtract as before. Your calculation will look like this. Remember that you have borrowed 1 from the tens column. This is usually denoted by crossing out the digit 9 and writing 1 less 8 above it. Here is the 1 that you borrowed. So 17 minus 8 is 9. You use the remaining 8 tens in your subsequent calculations. So, subtracting the 7 tens in 378 from the remaining 8 tens in 497 gives 1. Finally, 4 minus 3 is also 1. The above procedure is an explanation of how the borrowing method works. Naturally, you would not write your answer in this longer form, but as follows. This shows that 497 minus 378 equals 119. Example, what is 1694 minus 795? Here again, there are some digits in the larger number which are larger than the corresponding digits in the smaller number, and so you need to do some borrowing. As the units in 1694, 4, are smaller than the units in 795, 5, you need to borrow 110 from the next column to the left. 1694, 1000, plus 600, plus 9 tens, plus 4 units. Or, 1000, plus 600, plus 8 tens, plus 14 units. You can now perform the subtraction as 14 minus 5 equals 9. However, this borrowing means that you reduce the number of tens in 1694 from 9 to 8, and you have to borrow again from the hundreds to enable you to subtract the 9 tens in 795. 1694 is 1000 plus 500 plus 18 tens plus 14 units. You can now perform this subtraction as 18 minus 9 equals 9. Again, as you have reduced the number of hundreds in 1694 from 6 to 5, you need to borrow the 1000 to allow you to subtract the 700s from 795. 1694 is no thousands plus 15 hundreds plus 18 tens plus 14 units. You can now perform this final subtraction as 15 minus 7 equals 8 and you should check that 0 thousands plus 15 hundreds plus 18 tens plus 14 units equals 1694. The above procedure is an explanation of how the borrowing method works. Naturally you would not write your answer in this longer form. It is usually written with the borrowing illustrated by the numbers written above the 1694 as you start by writing this notice that the 1694 is above the 795 because it is a bigger number the calculation looks like this firstly borrow one of the tens from 1694 this leaves you with 8 tens and 14 units so 14 minus 5 is 9. Next we must borrow one of the 600s to leave 500s, but 18 tens. And 18 minus 9 is also 9. Finally you must borrow the 1000 to give 1500s. 
and 15 minus 7 is 8. This shows that 1694 minus 795 is 899. Further guidance and information. If you have any further questions about numeracy or would like to discuss any other aspects of mathematics, you can talk to your lecturer or personal advisor or make an appointment to see a learning enhancement tutor in the Dean of Students office. You can telephone 01603 592761 email dos.help at or visit our website at www.uea.ac.uk forward slash dos forward slash let. There are further resources on many other aspects of numeracy, mathematics, statistics and science available from the Dean of Students office and on its website. These include questions to practice, model solutions and webcasts illustrating essential skills. This guidance is one of a series on mathematics produced by the Dean of Students Office at the University of East Anglia.